The 7.6 magnitude earthquake in Japan on New Year's Eve killed around 100 people. But a year ago, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake killed around 50,000 people in Turkey and Syria. The majority of the fault in Japan was actually offshore, which is why they had a tsunami. Um, whereas in Turkey, the fault was running right through the middle of their cities. And you know, what shaking you get is a combination of what's released from the fault and how much it dies off before it gets to your location. So you actually did get stronger shaking in Turkey, but not by a huge amount. But I think if the, the Turkish earthquake, exactly that had happened in Japan, you still wouldn't be seeing 50,000 dead. You'd be seeing five or 10,000 dead. Experts say a large part of why Japan is as prepared for events like these comes down to the public being willing to accept earthquake safe building codes. Now in Japan, and there's a bigger sort of emotional demand uh, for the strongest possible codes. And there's also sort of um, a cultural issue about face. An engineer in Japan whose building fails is going to be humiliated. Constructing buildings to an earthquake safe code can be a costly investment. Think about how we think about earthquakes. There's the short term issue that they're very frightening in the moment, and that triggers all sorts of emotional reactions. But we don't prevent the building from coming down in the first place. So that preventing the building coming down in the first place is made in a very different emotional climate when you don't have the immediate risk in front of you and you're balancing out all of these different financial outcomes. And it's the problem that you have with a, with a hazard that uh, is very deadly but doesn't happen very often. 